If you've spent more than a minute on Etsy recently, you probably noticed a huge trend that is exploding right now. It looks something like this and like this and even like this. There are literally bestsellers all over the place in multiple categories. It's the in my era trend and it's everywhere. In today's video, I want to show you number one, how to create your own variation using Kittle so that it's unique to your ideal customer and also incorporates a front and back design. Number two, how to create a double-sided mock-up in Canva for your design so that your thumbnail shows the front and the back when a customer is viewing it in search results. And number three, how to create a front and back design in Printify and a personalized listing to go with it in Etsy. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Mandy and as the owner of multiple six-figure businesses, including Etsy print-on-demand shops, my goal is to provide you with strategies to simplify the journey and scale your business faster so that you can stop the overwhelm, start making progress, and thrive with your print-on-demand business. First, let's talk about why this is such a big trend and why it presents so many different opportunities. Number one, it's actually a concept that's existed for a long time. The whole idea of being in my era is really about a transitional time of life or claiming your interest or passion for whatever is captivating you at the moment. And while yes, the concept of eras has been made popular with the Taylor Swift eras tour, the trend itself is actually not about that specifically. And the whole point of this is that it can and should be done without infringing on any of her hundreds of trademarks or copyrights. So there's massive appeal because there's some great ways you can apply this trend without getting into trouble. And number two, it is one of the most versatile concepts that you can apply to literally anything and everything from book lovers to drinks of choice, to specific hobbies, to professions of every kind. It can also have the ability to stand the test of time because it can continue to be used in so many new and different ways. And in case you didn't hear me on number one, let's run it back one more time. The key to doing this the legitimate way is to not infringe on Taylor's or anybody else's trademarks or copyrights. That means zero mention of Taylor, zero mention of Swifty or Eras Tour anywhere in your listing, including your design, your titles, your tags, and your description. Her management team does massive sweeps every year and it can get you shut down. Now, if you're sitting there thinking you're too late to this trend, the top sellers that are literally bringing in thousands each month are relatively new listings. If we look up In My Era on Etsy, then go to our Everbe Chrome extension and then select product analytics and then select search entire database so that we can see across all results, not just the first page. We can see that most of these best-selling listings are less than three months old and they're for fairly broad niches. So that means there's still plenty of room at the table, my friend. So then how do you make this design work? Well, number one, you're going to get creative. That means you're not just going to slap an In My Mama era on a shirt and call it a day. That will have you mixed in with all of these bestsellers. You will not stand out and you will not be able to capture the attention and traction that they've already established. Instead, you're going to get specific with your niche and sub niches, and you're going to create a version that resonates specifically with them. Number two, you're going to add an extra level of details that make it unique and special for the customer using personalization. Because again, this is all about your specific target customer and how you can create that deeper connection with them so that they want your listing instead of somebody else's. And number three, you're going to trend combined by making the major part of the design on the back personalized with an additional pocket design on the front also personalized. Business in the front, party in the back. Now let's walk through this together. First, let's start with the actual niche I'm going to use as the basis for this design process. The shop that I use for sharing on this channel is all about dogs. The In My Dog Mama era 
is totally saturated based on a very quick search on Etsy. So what do we do when we have a niche that is saturated? We go deeper into a sub niche. For dogs, one of the ways to do that is by picking different breeds. In this particular case, I know from research and from current data in my shop that Bernie's Mountain Dog Moms are a great audience. It's a popular breed and this particular design style hasn't made it there yet. So the basis of this design will be around a common breed nickname, which is Burners. So I'm going to do an In My Burner Mama era. How did I know that this was a common nickname for Bernie's Mountain Dogs that would resonate with the owner of such a dog? Do I own one? Nope. I'm a cat mom actually, but I've gotten really good at leveraging research to understand my target customer. If you want more insight on exactly how I do my research, I've linked the first video for my recent time blocking series that takes you behind the scenes on how I do it. But for now, let's dive into the actual design. I want to do this particular one in Kittle because I can give the text some extra personality and make it stand out from a basic text or traditional wavy line. So let's dive in. In Kittle, I'm gonna start with a new project. And so to do that, I'm going to come up here to a new project. I'm going to change the height just a little bit so it's a little bit taller. And then it'll be 300 DPI. And so when I do that, you can see that it changes the size for me automatically. So we're gonna to go to create, and now we've got our artboard to start with. Then I'm going to start adding text. So I usually just start with T on my keyboard and make this bigger so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to start with a retro font. I really like this sunny drop. It's got that retro feel to it. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to just start placing it on my artboard as I go. You'll notice that I'm creating the letters individually. Why? Well, as I said, I don't want this to just be another a basic design that's out there or just have your simple run of the mill wave to it. I want it to have a little bit of personality. And so you'll see as we get farther into the design, I want to have different colors incorporated for each of the letters. And I also want to be able to distort them independently of each other. So in order to do that, I'm making the letters separate. Does it take a little extra time? Sure, but that is okay because it does go pretty quickly and I'm just using keyboard shortcuts to control copy and paste as I go with each of the letters. So then in my burner is the next one and I'm just creating rough outlines of the direction that I want the text to go so that it's there for me. And then I can come back when I'm at the end and start adjusting from here. Now I've got a little extra room here, so I want to make this part of it bigger and I want the burner part to stand out because that is the main part of our niche. So I'm gonna make that part a little bit bigger and let's add just some initial kind of direction in here. I can do that and then I want it to be sideways a little bit so I can just grab the whole thing and give it a little bit of movement. Same thing up here. I'm just gonna move some of these around initially. Again, just to give myself a visual idea of where things are lining up. And so next is in my burner mama era. So I'm gonna grab an M at the top, bring that in, make that a little bit bigger. Again, we're purposely aiming for variances in text size and position just so that there's a little more personality in our design and because these two letters repeat we can just do that and bring in some variants there and then the last one is these three letters so i'm just going to copy paste bring those down and start there now with each of these letters, one of the reasons that I love Kittle and love to use it for more complex designs and to make things a little more interesting is because it's got the ability to transform text. Now, normally when you're making text, you're in one long phrase like this, these would be all together and you're changing it all at once. Like if you wanna add an arch or make it into a circle, because I have each of these individual, what that allows me to do is when I click on distort, that means that I can start grabbing each one of these letters 
individually and independent of all the others and I can start giving them a little more movement. So within each of these, I can start essentially melding them so that they've got their own flow here and it looks like they're almost kind of morphing together. If you accidentally click out of it, you just need to go back into the edit transform and keep going. And so then I can add in some different angles, different levels here, so that as I start pulling things around, it creates some unique direction with each of these. And then there's also levers, so I can change that a little bit as well. And then as I go, if I need to move things over just a little bit, I can do that. Since this is kind of my main word here, I want to really stretch this and give it something interesting. I can do that to be a little careful on the transformations because if you go too wild, you'll actually get some hard lines in there. Like if I do that, you get some weird angles. So to be a little bit careful, but for the most part, the goal is just to have it look and feel a bit like free form. The next thing I want to do is bring in some color. So let's do that. My simple trick for this is I'm actually just going to go to Google and I type in retro color palette. It's a fun way to bring up all sorts of different palettes. I have shown it in other videos. There are tools that you can use like coolers.io that does more or less the same thing, but Google is faster. It's in everyone's browser. You don't have to remember a website. Just remember Google and then you can type in retro color palette like I've got here. You can do hippie color palette. You can do boho. You can have 70s. You could have vintage. You could have 90s, which is another fun palette because there's lots of neons involved. So there are a lot of fun ways that you can bring in some different ideas and color palettes into your design. I've got retro here because you've seen that used in a few different ways. I'm also going to type in boho just to show you some differences. It's a fun way to just scroll through and look at something that will have some nice color variation that you can incorporate. I'm going to grab this one because there's a few different colors that I can pick from and so I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to save image and then I'm simply going to upload and drop that color palette into my artboard back on Kittle. Once I've uploaded the color palette, then I simply, again, drop it onto my artboard and I'm just going to shove it down here in the corner. I don't need it very big because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab each individual letter and then I'm going to click on the text color and I'm going to use the color picker, the little dropper symbol, click on that. And then that's going to give me the ability to start selecting something on my screen. So in this case, let's start with that color. And let's bring in something along these lines. And then let's go with something kind of on a cooler hue. And so then for each of these, I'm simply going to go through and change the color in the same order for each of the letters. Slightly tedious. Yes. Does it take very long? No. And so Again, it's one of those things that I can add some additional personality to the design. It's going to look different in its own way from everything else that's out there because I've taken the time to make it a little bit more unique. Yes, simple cells. There is really nothing super complex about this, but the extra little details that I'm taking care of in here is what's going to help set this design apart from everything that's out there. So once I've got that, now if I decide that I want to make adjustments to these colors, you saw that as I started selecting, once you've got all your colors, you got your document colors. But then when you get to the end, you're like, you know what? I don't know that I want this as orange as this. And so I can actually come down here to my colors and this is your project colors. And so from here, I can adjust this palette and so there's different ways that you can play around with these colors. Now let's add in a few elements. I want to make this sparkle a little bit as part of our design. So it's as simple as literally typing in sparkle into our search. 
and I don't necessarily want the really harsh lines of these because this is a softer edge design and so I'll grab something like this and I want this to match our color palette so I'm going to grab that and we can copy and paste and I'm just going to drop in a few of these as placeholders that I'll come back around adjust as we go make a few little ones in here I want to have a few as part of our design and I don't make these bright white so I do slightly off-white so we can kind of make some little sparkles as part of our lettering for some character nothing overly flashy just a little bit of extra in our design I'm gonna add in this taller one make that a little bit color just so I can stand out a bit. Again, I'm really just adding placeholders at this point because there's a few other things I want to add, but I want to make sure I've got a few different elements that I can pull from as we go. So then the next thing that I want to do, I'm not getting rid of this just yet, just in case I want to bring in some other things. But the next thing I want to do is I want to make this again relevant to a dog mom. So to do that, we're going to add in a paw. And so just need something simple. So this one will work just fine. So I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to make these in contrasting colors that aren't right next to them. So in this case, I'm going to make this one more of that yellow color. And then for this one down here, I'm going to bring in more of that coral color. And again, at this point, we're just really refining what we've got. Over time, the more you design, the more you start to get a feel for what works together, palettes that work together. A lot of it's just trial and error, playing around with it and just seeing what looks good. Look at a design and say, would I buy that? If your answer is no, your design is probably not good enough yet. And I say yet because the key here is to keep practicing and keep trying and keep trying your hand at different things because the more you practice, the better you will get. So I am good with that. And then the final little piece that I want to add on here, it's our additional nod to this idea of different versions of eras. Again, if you're familiar with Taylor, she's got her Taylor's version. We are not going after that trademark at all. We are steering clear of it. But what we can do is take that concept and apply it specifically to something that's going to resonate with a dog mom. And then what I want to do is at the bottom, I want to incorporate the dog's name so that it's personalized to the dog owner. So in this case, we're going to say Lucy's version. Lucy is just going to be our placeholder name that we use for the front and the back of this design. And we're going to put it in parentheses. Again, as our subtle nod to a particular trend, but without infringing on any actual copyright or trademark in this case. And so I'm gonna change the font. I want it to be more of a script. I tend to like this send flowers is a nice one. Otherwise this adventurer one is a nice one. I might actually go with that one just because it's going to show up a little bit better on a sweatshirt. And then I'm gonna change the text color and let's go with blue just so it stands out nicely and that will be our customized design and that looks good so we can save this i'm going to call it poho burner and then we're going to download it and because we already have this set here you can either do it when you're setting up your new artboard or here on the back end i do it both ways doesn't matter accomplishes the same goal we're going to download it as a png and our back of the shirt is done. So, so far we've hit the trend of having a design that's gonna go on the back. It fits with the current trend of In My Era, it's specific to a sub-niche targeted customer. It's got some elements that are going to link to that customer. And we've added in the dog name at the bottom so that it's their version and going to be specific to a customer. Remember this name is just a placeholder and it's what's going to go on the mock-up and then the customer will have the ability to personalize their item when they want to purchase it. 
So that's the back design. Now for the front. Remember the back and front pocket style is kind of a trend in and of itself. So we're combining things here a little bit to leverage the demand in both ways. So in this case, I'm going to create another new project in Kittle. With this new project, I just need a basic square. So this is fine for now, just something simple to get us going. And then whenever I'm looking for a very particular element for design, I quite often come over to Creative Fabrica and look through their designs that they have. In this case, I typed in Bernie's Mountain Dog and you can see there are a ton of different options. I wanted one specifically for a face and I wanted more of a watercolor style. And so this is the one that I found that I'm going to use. You can see there's actually a variety of breeds here. So I could create other versions of this if I wanted to for some of the other dog breeds that I offer in my shop. But obviously this first one here is that Bernie's Mountain Dog. So we're going to go with this one for now and we can simply download it. And then when we download it, we can then upload it to Kittle and use it for our design. Once we've got it uploaded, we can then simply place it here as part of our new artboard that we created. I'm gonna make it nice and large just so it fills the space. And I do this so that it's easier than when I'm trying to place it on Printify and get the spot right for where the pocket design goes. It's a little bit easier. And then I'm going to add text below it because I want that placeholder name in here. So remember we use Lucy on the back as part of our initial placeholder design. So we'll do that here. I want to match the same font that I used for the back design for that script where the name was. So that was this Adventure 07. You could, if you wanted to, you could add in an angle or a rise. If you wanted to flip this right now, it's curve up. If I wanted it to curve down and around, I simply need to flip that. And so then I can get a nice little curve in there as part of the design. A short name is not as noticeable, but for a long name, it would actually curve nicely around the dog's face, which I think would look really nice. So let's go with that for now. And again, I like this font because it's nice and bold so that it will show up really well when it's actually printed. So I'm gonna make sure that's centered. I'm gonna actually make this name a little bit bigger so that it's nice and visible when it's ready for printing. And this looks good to go. So I'm just gonna call this Bernie's face and then we'll download. Now for a simple design like this, we could have definitely just done this in Canva, um, but I wanted this particular font to match what we had in the back design. So this is an instance where I'll have my template here in Kittle and anytime a personalized order comes in, I would just need to make sure that I start here and make my updates to this template when I need to update the design. Now we've got our front pocket design done. So now we've got the front and the back done. The next step is that we're going to head over to Canva and I'm going to create a front and back mock-up for these in the same thumbnail. In Canva, I'm just gonna start with a traditional mock-up. I get these off of Etsy. There are a lot of great sellers out there. This one happened to be in a bundle, so it had several colors that I plan on using with the back modeled. So I've got my mock-ups loaded in here, and then I'm gonna come over here to Elements, and I wanna search for Frame. And what we're looking for ideally is one that actually has a border around it, so it's separate from the rest of the mock-up. And so as we're scrolling here, there are a few different options. You could add in a large rectangle like this and have it something along those lines. You could have a circle in here. Typically I go up to the top left with these. That's one option. I like this oval one just because it looks nice and you can see a little bit more of the mock-up once it's in there. And then I typically just change the border of it. I am careful to not make it too big and not get too close to the edge because remember Etsy is making a lot of changes with their thumbnails and the search results with them being square. So I try not to put too much on the edges with the perimeter. It's okay if you lose a little bit of this because the design is going to be over here. And then what I'm going to do before I upload my design is I've also got in here a front version of the white sweatshirt that I want to incorporate. And so I'm just going to slide that up 
see how it clicks in with the frame. Once you see it filling the frame, I don't want it to fill over here. I want it to fill the frame. So I'm dragging it there until it locks in and then I'm letting go on my mouse. Now Canva has a weird glitch where it does this, but it's essentially duplicating it. So I delete this. It didn't used to do that, but it does now. So I just delete that. And here you can see my mock-up is in there. If you double click on it, you can adjust the size because what I want to do is in this little view, I want to highlight, I still want it to be visible that this is a sweatshirt. So I still want to be able to see the long sleeve here. I still want to see that there's a collar here and I still want to be able to get a close up of where the design will go, which is here. And so that is why I make this adjustment so that you can really see both sides. Don't worry about hair matching, it's okay. I try to make sure the tone of the sweatshirt is pretty close. If you need to adjust it, you can come up here to edit photo. If I wanted to make this a little bit brighter to kind of match this one, I could, but that's not too bad. And then if I need to move this around, I can and we'll play around with that a little bit more once we've got the design in. Same thing goes with this. So I've actually got this off centered a bit. And so if I zoom out, you can see that the image, it's, that the mock-up itself actually extends beyond. And so if I moved around like that, I can, and you could also shrink it. And I've got it just so that I can pull it off to the side because I want it to be more on the right side of the image so that there's room for this but just know that if you double click that is how i'm adjusting my mock-up on the background of the actual of the actual canva image and so then i want to actually upload both of the designs that i created in kittle we're going to add that here and start placing so i've got both of my designs now here on one mock-up and so for this one for the pocket design we're going to shrink it be careful when you're working with frames because if i just start grabbing this and holding down with my mouse it's going to try and fill the frame we don't want that so drag that back out here hold down your shift key and then use the arrows on your keyboard to move it that way and slide it with your keyboard instead of trying to use your mouse it takes a little bit of finessing but you can still adjust and twist with your mouse but i find that it can get a little challenging when you're actually trying to move stuff around just be aware that that's how i move stuff without it having getting a weird lock on the frame so we're going to expand that make sure we can see it and then just like we always do, we're going to lower the transparency because we don't want it super bright and vivid that way. Then we're gonna focus on our other one, our back design. The goal is for it to take up a lot of the back space based on what's going to be in the print area with our printer. So we're going to put it about there in the middle. I always use the collar as kind of my centering both here as well as hair covers it a bit in this one but if you can just imagine the right side of that collar is here and so i center my design right under that same thing here i'm going to take my design and then i'm going to lower the transparency a bit and that is my design that looks super cute so i'm happy with that now i've actually got the rest of my mock-ups already built in here so i can just take both of these copy bring them down here same thing i'm going to use my keyboard more so than my mouse to make the adjustments start with a pocket one get that centered on there and then i'm going to adjust this one get that centered like that and that looks good and again same thing here i've got it all the way to the side if i need more room i can always if you're moving this make sure you grab both because they're not connected i can always adjust here move that around if needed but that looks pretty good and then because i ended up going with a darker image here i'm not going to use this black one because that dog face is not going to show up 
So instead, we'll just come down here to this last one on the ash color, and we'll drop that one in, and we'll just have a couple color options for this one. So we're gonna shrink that just a little bit to make sure we get the ratio right. We're looking at the center under the collar again, and that looks good. And then we'll just shrink this down a little bit because our mock-up's different. Need to move this over. You could shrink this a bit. Just make sure that you're accounting for that and not making your mock-up too small because remember as the customer is scrolling they're looking at a very tiny square on Etsy so just keep that in mind that you want to make sure your ratios look nice on screen so that it will be clear to the customer from those search results hopefully stop that scroll and have them click into your listing instead of somebody else's okay so that looks good. So we've got a few mock-ups in here for what we're going to use. I could go through, I could add just a back picture. I could go in and add just a front picture, but I really want to emphasize that there's printing on both sides. So we're going to just use those for now. And you can see at the very end, I've got a size chart in here. So everything is ready to export. I'm gonna export it as one file as JPEGs and a download. Then the last thing I'll do is make my listing video by changing the duration of each of the pages to one second. Now, sometimes you'll see in some cases when I click on the back page, I don't get a timer. Other times I do get a timer. Why there's a difference? I don't know. I think it's a glitch in Canva. It never used to be that way. Either way, if you see that timer button show up, cool change it to one second. So essentially each of these pages then will last for one second on screen and it will essentially create a slideshow in the listing search results so that when a customer, if you've ever been on Etsy and you're scrolling through search results and the listings start moving and showing a video, that's where those come from. It's from listing videos. And so to make our own by simply using mockups, we're changing these to one second. You can also do 1.5, but if you have like 10 pages, meaning you're gonna use all 10 listing photos, you wanna keep it closer to one second because you don't want a long video in there. And so we're changing this to one second and we're applying to all pages. If what happens like on this page where you don't see that, the trick is look down here and look for this show pages, the little up arrow. Click on that, you'll see all of your pages. Click on any of your pages and then click on this duration button and then that will force this little edit timing up here to show up. And then you can click on that and do the same thing, apply to all pages. So those are just two ways that you can essentially turn your static pages into a video. So then once we've got all of our pages converted, we're gonna go up to share, we're gonna download it again. And this time it's going to be an MP4 video and that will be our listing video. So we'll download that as well. And then we are ready to head over to Printify and create the actual listing. When I'm in Printify, I'm gonna start with an existing Bernie's Mountain Dog sweatshirt listing because I know I already have some keywords in the title built in and it's already got everything I want in the description. So I'm just gonna scroll through. I typed in Bernie's within my products and then I'm just gonna scroll through and find one doesn't particularly matter. I'm gonna use this one because it's already got retro in there. And then I'm going to click on this little duplicate button. I'm going to duplicate that product. So then I'm gonna to go to edit the design. And I'm first going to start with the colors that I'm planning on offering for this sweatshirt. Again, for this one, I just have three for now. So that's fine. So we're gonna get rid of any other colors. And so then I've got my colors in there. So let's start with the front. I've got my front design, and so then let's get rid of what's already in there, and I'm gonna upload the front pocket design that I already created. Since I took up most of the space in the design, once it's uploaded, I simply just need to shrink it down. I know that the final product, I want to be around that four to four and a half inches high. So then I can use these numbers over here to kind of gauge roughly where I'm at. And so then again, right under the collar, I'm looking for that right seam where the collar is. And I wanna kind of walk that and eyeball that straight down and use that for the center of where this design is. And then I can always look at the preview to get a rough estimate of where it's going to land. 
and generally for these it's easier to tell when it's on a person so I'll usually look at one or two of the models just to make sure it's exactly where I intended it to be and that looks pretty good I would say and the sizing looks about right and so then on the back we can flip over here and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add our design, upload it, and again we want this to be big because the point is to make a bold statement on the back of the shirt. And so this looks good. If I come up here to preview, I just want to take a peek and make sure that that looks and about as I would expect it to. That looks really good and it coincides with what we had in our canva as well and so as long as all of that looks set we can save our product that's going to bring us back here i'm going to make a couple minor changes here retro is fine but i'm going to lead with in my era personalized and then we're going to move this personalized bernie's mountain dog mom sweatshirt and then we're going to move the retro down there don't need retro more than once so I can pull that out and then I'm going to say custom gift so personalized and custom are two big keywords that are great to incorporate whenever you've got that as part of your listing so I try to leverage that I'm trying to incorporate that in my era piece in there as my leading edge just because I'm trying to take advantage of this trending term and then I'm also making sure that really when you look at this in the search term, really the first part that you're going to see in those search results is the front part of your title. And that's going to be your critical spot for keywords. So in my era, personalized and Bernie's, those are going to be my big keywords that I want to make sure show up at the very beginning of my title because those are going to be my strongest keywords. Instead of vintage, I'm going to just say retro here. These are all fine and again I've already got all of my listing details, my description, my care instructions, all the stuff that I normally include because I'm using one of my other existing products as a baseline for this just to save a little bit of time and make it a little bit more efficient. Also going to add a note in here towards the top so after my first couple sentences I have some additional keywords in there. Right below that I'm just going to make a note for printing on both sides and that name personalization would be the same on the front and back. I've got my shipping profile. I already have one in here for Swift Pod, so we'll use that. If you follow me for a while, you know that I prefer to set my pricing here in Printify because I use it by percentage. One thing you'll note here, normally for this profit margin, I typically have it right around 65% and then I use Etsy sales and discounts and things like that. To help control and experiment with my pricing strategy on that side versus trying to change every size every variation every color all the time and so that's just for my personal preference on how i keep things efficient and simple if you prefer to set it as a flat rate that's totally fine just make sure you're using a profit calculator to do that so that you're not losing money one thing i want to call attention to is that this no longer says my normal 65 percent and that is because front and back designs cost a little bit more because the printer has to do the printing twice. And so that is why there's a difference here. So keep that in mind. And again, it's another reason why I like to use percentage because I don't have to worry about monkeying around with it all the time. By using the percentage profit method, I ensure that my costs are still covered and that I'm still making a profit at the end of it. So to change this, I'm going to select all edit price, edit profit margin, I want to put it back to 65%. I want to hide this product because I want to make some edits first on the Etsy side before it's visible and starts hitting the search algorithm. And then I'm going to turn off mockups. And so what Printify will do is they will transfer over one mockup so that you can see which design you're working with, but it won't send over all the rest. So it'll make your listing publish faster. And we're using our own product mockups anyway. I don't recommend using the ones that are in there. So now we are going to publish. So now it's done. So when I flop over here to my Etsy store and if I refresh my page and then I look down here in draft you'll see 
it's there and waiting for me. So now I'm going to come in here and if you've seen my videos before, you know that I don't like using the old version. It's nowhere near as efficient or streamlined as a previous one. So yes, I go back to the old version. So now I'm going to wipe out this one that's in here and then I'm going to add in the mockups that I created. Since we've got them all in one nice folder, I'm just going to select all and then those are going nicely. And as you can see, it shows up really well here. And again, the reason I did this is because here we are still seeing a bit of a rectangle shape. We're still seeing that 4-3 aspect ratio in Etsy, but in the search results, remember that it's going to get cut off a little bit. And so we can zoom this in a little bit, but I don't want to go too far because I still want people to be able to see that there's some more off to the side in these. So if you need to adjust where your thumbnail is or if you need to zoom in, you can do that here. Just remember, don't zoom in too far because as people are scrolling the search results, they still need to be able to see what your product is and what it's on not just the design. So that looks good. We could swap out our first mock-up if I wanted to have the sand in that first spot, which I might just because sand tends to be a very popular color for this shop in particular. Same thing with the video. I can add that in. While all of those are updating and my video is going, all of this looks fine. I do make sure to change this to another company or person because I use a printing partner as part of the production assistance and we've got that loaded in there. I make sure I select all of my attributes. So we'll just grab a couple of the colors that are in the design and then I select everything else associated with it. I don't need occasion. I don't need holiday because this design isn't specific to either of those, but it does have a phrase in there and I let them auto renew for at least a couple cycles. Usually got my printing partner. I've got Swift pod in there and then I do have a Bernie's mountain dog mom section already. So I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to skip tags for now and I'll show you in a second why. And now here I'm going to link my photos that I uploaded. I do this so that when a customer is looking at the different color options and they select a color in the drop down, it will match with what you select here. And so I do that so that when they select white, it'll show white. If they select ash, it'll show ash. And so it just really helps connect the customer so that they can see what the design looks like on each color, which really does help with the conversion. You can have a color chart in there and have 50 colors, but honestly, the fewer the better in terms of keeping it simple, keeping it to no more than six or seven color variations so that you have enough room in your listing photos to show them all and actually have it on a mock-up for that customer to see. Conversions tend to be so much better when that's the case in my experience and so that is always my recommendation. Now when I get to the SKUs for each of the variations, I'm going to delete them. You don't have to do this but the reason I prefer to do it this way is number one, my pricing already comes in from Printify so I don't have to sit here, I don't have to enter them all in, I don't have to monkey around with each of the variations and the sizes. It's already there so all I'm doing is deleting the SKUs. If I were to leave the SKUs in, the orders that come in for this product would just go in my regular orders list and I have to make sure I catch them and see that they are a personalized item. Whereas if you take the SKUs out, the orders still transfer over to Printify. However, they're going to go to your other orders tab and be separate. And I prefer to do it this way instead of having them mixed together with my other orders. Again, you don't have to do this, but for me, it helps keep my orders organized so that I know which ones need an update on the design before getting sent to production. Because the last thing I want is to accidentally send an order into production with the template design on there or some other dog's name on there. I want to make sure I get it right and I want to make sure that I'm catching those orders and seeing them as being in two separate 
places. So that is why I do it that way. Personalization, we want to make sure we turn that on and then add in instructions for the customer to indicate in the box the dog name that they want used in this case and indicate that it's going to be used on the front and the back part of the design. And then everything else on here should be good to go as is because our policies on returns and all that is already set. So that looks good. So then we'll go ahead and hit publish. And if you get the weird glitch like I do with the red bar, it's fine. You just have to press it twice. And so then that will publish the listing. So when we refresh our screen, it will now show up here as part of our regular listings. Now I mentioned that I don't put the tags in first. And the reason I do that is because I already have other similar listings out here that I want to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go to my section that has my other Bernie's Mountain Dog Mom shirts in there. And I have one that's already personalized. And so I'm going to click on quick edit and then I'm going to grab these tags, copy them. I'm going to click on add tags, add them. And so now I've got tags in here based on research that I've already done. Because I want to use one of these spots with that in my era component, I've already got 13 in here. So I'm just going to delete one that's a little more generic. And then I'm going to do in my era dog mom. So I'm going to update tags. And now my tags are done for this without having to go back and add them all in, do more research. I'm using tags that I already know and have done research on that I know are going to work for this particular case you don't have that, simply do your research and then make sure you add in your 13 tags for that listing. And that's it. Now the beauty of this trend is that it has literally endless possibilities and it's going to have some longevity. My suggestion, start with what you know. If you already have established niches in your shop, think about how you could creatively leverage those with this trend. I highly recommend going into sub niches where you can so that you can differentiate yourself from what's already out there. If you don't have niches in your shop, or if you're not sure you have a solid direction on your niches to begin with, I've linked my niche basics video for you that will walk you through the process and help you better understand how those work and why they're important. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you want to learn more about my strategies for thriving in your print on demand business, make sure you've got the notifications turned on for my channel so that you don't miss out on any of the content. And in the meantime, be sure to check out the dedicated playlist with my full print on demand masterclass right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here and I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for more ways to continue the journey and stay connected, I'm so excited to invite you to my brand new membership, the Simply Thrive Club. Unlike other programs, this is not a course. In fact, it's not even a program in the traditional sense. And that's because all of the steps that you need to build your print on demand business can be obtained for free on my channel through a variety of videos and playlists that I've put together specifically to help you on your journey. My in-depth course is a not behind a paywall. So instead, this new membership is all about community with ongoing challenges to drive growth and a support system for accountability to keep going. It's goal setting to maximize your pockets of time and stay organized so that you can thrive even amidst a busy schedule. And it's action taking with expert resources and tools in order to master skills necessary for scaling faster and more efficiently. That is where the magic happens in your print on demand journey. Your willingness to clarify your goals, commit with consistency, and adapt your mindset and your approach so that you understand what will work and what won't. This totally new platform is a community that is off of social media and away from spam and distractions, including a community app. I've created over 80 plus professional mockups with more on the way. There are monthly accountability challenges because did I mention I'm all about consistency? I've included the ability to request quarterly comprehensive shop audits and live group calls each month where we can talk about all things print on demand, time blocking, setting realistic goals, finding process efficiencies, and so much more. Be sure to check it out. And in the meantime, keep going, keep learning, and keep growing on your print on demand journey.